Hey, so I got my plants. Uh, I'm really excited to see if they're okay. These are for the medieval cooking class that I'm so excited to do. And they gave me this giant list of herbs that I had to buy. Not had to, they, they said specifically like, look, if, if you can't find these herbs and spices and things, don't worry about it. The point of taking a medieval cooking class is to cook medieval foods. And it's like the rest of the list of things that you have to buy was stuff like chicken and you know meat and basic ingredients and stuff. And I think really what's gonna make it different is not just the cooking preparations, but also these herbs and spices. So for instance, like I know what a roasted chicken tastes like. I've made many a roasted chicken, but I don't know what something with dittany in it tastes like or ale cost also called costmary. I don't know what that tastes like. So that's what I'm here to find out. So like, you, if you're gonna do it, you're gonna do it. You know, when am I gonna have this opportunity again? So, hey. Ah! Hey, turn up the caramel and chisel on the shizney. It's time for me to walk. Let me introduce myself. I'm a cheetah burrito. My pants are made of leather. I find a how to concentrate. So I looked all over the place, all over the internet. I found most of the spices. I think I found the hardest spices. I, I did manage to find them. Trust me, it was not a hardship to spend the day researching herbs and spices. The herbs are a little bit harder because those are fresh, you know? And I did find a couple of them dried, but I really wanted these fresh herbs because I have a feeling that fresh is how they would have eaten them. And it was sort of specified. There was, they were separated out between, you know, fresh and dry ingredients. So I was like, if I can get these fresh, I want them fresh. So if nobody in my area carries fresh costmary, which they don't, then I, I, I figured the next best thing would be uh, maybe I can buy a plant and just harvest my own. And I am not amazing at growing plants, but herbs tend to be a little easier. So, you know, I thought, let's, let's just see what we can find. I found this company called Mountain Valley Growers. They happen to have quite a few of the things that I needed and some of the, the harder to find things. They weren't very expensive, which is nice. I mean, it, it comes out to a lot when you're done buying it all and you know having it shipped, but not too bad. And they're in California, so it didn't have that far to travel, which you know made me feel a little bit more confident. They did have something on there about like, look, you know, as we're getting into this time of the year, if it's past a certain date, we can't necessarily guarantee that everything's gonna get there alive. So if that's the case, we might invite you to basically waive the, um, the warranty, which is what happened. They sent me an email and they're like, look, you know, it's, it's a little bit too cold in your area. Do you want to waive the warranty? Uh, in which case we don't guarantee your plants are going to get there alive. Or would you prefer to just have us refund you? And I thought about it and it was a really tough choice because, you know, I, I'm, I can't afford to be wasting money and, you know, getting a box of dead plants. But also where I am, I know that the, you know, the weather's still pretty mild. And they said, you know, and I, I asked, I was like, are these gonna be sent out right away? Uh, and, and they said, yeah, we would send them out like tomorrow. Uh, and I said, well, let's roll the dice. They were sort of my last resort. I had, I had found one or two other things on Etsy and in between the time that I put it in my cart, and actually went to, you know, hit purchase, somebody else bought them. Which, I wonder if it's somebody else who's doing this class, which it would be kind of cool, like we're all scrambling for the same ingredients. So that that didn't work, and I, and I was like, man, I, I don't, I don't wanna give up on this. I, I really wanna do this. My friend was so kind and generous to gift me this class, and it's such an amazing opportunity to, to have this experience, and I, I wanna do it right. And plus, I just, I love, herbs and spices and things like that. And I wanna know what they taste like. And I, I minored in medieval studies cause I'm interested. So, you know, like this is relevant to many of my interests. So I, I rolled the dice and I got the box. We'll see if they're alive. All right. Oh, I'm so nervous. <gasps> I see alive. I see alive things. It occurs to me now that I didn't check to make sure that these were cat safe plants. Uh, so, uh, no ma'am. I will take these out. I will get them hopefully established. Take it easy. It's not only fans. Okay, so this is what I came up with. Uh, a little plastic mini collapsible greenhouse thing. And it's movable. So it's gonna keep these guys protected 
indoors and keep Stella protected. She's not a cat to ignore new things in her environment and she's not the type of cat to be told no. She's about to jump on me and it's gonna be terrible. So during the day these are gonna go out on the patio when it's nice and a little bit warmer and this will keep them even warmer. Uh, and Stella doesn't go on the patio, she's not allowed out there. Um, and then uh, in the evening they'll, they'll come in here. And then the rest of everything I've made sure is uh, totally safe for kitties. And I really, I gotta say, I love looking at this window and seeing all these plants. So if you wanna see what everything is, down here is my, this is Dittany of Crete. It's a relative of oregano. This is my Costmary, also known as Ale Cost. That guy in the back, that looks like something uh, from a Dr. Seuss book. I know it's not the greatest view, but it is toxic to cats. I'm not taking it out indoors. So that's my uh, southern wood. This here is some sage. This guy is winter savory. On to sweet marjoram. This dude here, what are you again? Hyssop. Very nice. This is a begonia that my friend gave me. It's like a little cutting. She assured me that she won't be mad if it dies in my care, so um, I'm still gonna, I'm gonna do my best. I'm gonna do my level best, but I'm not great with things. But also it's, it's cat safe, so that's really good. Uh, this is some uh, green onions that I grew from some green onions that I ate. And like, look at that, like they're, they're really going. This is some thyme that I regrew from some thyme that I ate. Same with this sage right here. Uh, I got another sage just because I wasn't sure how well this one was gonna do. Um, it was just a couple of leaves and I planted it. It was just the last of the sage that I had been eating and I planted it and hoped for the best. And it sat there alive but looking exactly the same for like two months. And I was like, I mean, it's not dead, but it's not doing anything, but it's not dead. So, okay. Uh, and then suddenly it started doing this. So hopefully that means uh, he's gonna make it. So that's good. This is some mint. And again, it's just, I grew it from cuttings, which I love that you can do that. Um, this, you can sort of see it's starting to germinate. There we go. This is some um, garden cress, which I couldn't find as an herb, but I did find seeds. Whether or not they'll be ready to go and edible uh, by the time I need them to be, I don't think so, but I have a way to get water cress, which it's not exactly the same, but it should do in a pinch if I need to. And I'm just regrowing it in like a little salad container thing, um, keeping some of that moisture in there, keeping some of the heat in there, hopefully amplifying some of that sunlight. And it, it did speed up germination. So, Ow. hey there. Yeah, this is why we have to keep the plants covered and uh, anything out here has to be cat, cat safe. Ow. Otherwise, Ow. little Miss Stella's Ow. in some trouble. This is a lettuce I'm trying to regrow. It's going okay. This is about the, the point where it stops being okay usually in my experience, so this could go either way. I know that it's supposed to be super easy to regrow lettuce uh, from scraps. Uh, that's what they say. It has not been my experience, but lots of people do it. So I, I'm just gonna have to keep trying. And this is what was a mint. It's, I, I just feel like it's not gone yet because I thought this one was gone I thought that one had died, and then all of a sudden it started doing this. So I'm gonna let that stay in there with that lettuce. Here's another, uh, some more green onions. Um, I have found that this is a great use for old um, spice jars and things like that. I have found saving my spice jars to be really, really handy for a lot of things. And the little short, uh, there we go, the <laughs> little short spice jars for just the little tiny guys, those are great for, you know, sticking small things in, like when you're first starting these guys out and you can have them, you know, um, where they're easily accessible. And then if they get bigger and nicer, then you can stick them in the taller one. This is some oregano that I regrew, uh, also from cuttings and some more green onions. Like green onions are pretty easy. Even I have been successful with green onions. So if I can do that, 
you can 1000% do that. And then this is some unusually successful basil. I have really bad luck with basil, um, but these I actually grew from seeds, which is amazing to me and they're doing okay. And it's actually probably a bit crowded, but so far I've just been eating it as it grows and it's been okay. And if somebody has any really good information for me, like, oh God, you gotta separate those out right now, like then I'll do that. But apart from that, like so far so good. This one still has to be repotted. This is some garlic chives. I ran out of potting soil. I'm gonna have to wait until that gets here on Thursday. Um, I might just repot this with some random dirt that I have um, just to get it out of this little tiny container. I, I'm not really sure what to do there. And then I can always just repot it with the better stuff when the potting soil gets here. I'm not really sure. But it's starting to get a little bit yellow, which I think is a bad sign. And I want this to live. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. So I just wanna take a minute while the cat's asleep to look at the stuff that's that's not cat safe. Not all of this is uncat safe. I just put it all together so it could all go outside. For instance, this here is hyssop. That's cat safe, that's totally fine. But you know, I have this cool box that I, you know, that I put these in and I had room for more. So I figured why not put some of these outside? It's definitely a little bit bigger than it was. It's still pretty small. I don't think any of these are really big enough to actually use in recipes. You know, I'll make the recipes as I can with what I have. And then it's not like they're gonna rep repossess that knowledge from my brain, you know? Like I'll make them again later. And then not only will I have the ingredients, but I'll also have the experience. It's not the end of the world. I'm concerned about some of these yellow leaves. I hope that's all right. This here is Dittany. So I'll try and get a good view of him. These leaves are lovely and soft. And uh, if they look sort of, uh, I don't know, like, like rabbit fur kind of stuff. It reminds me of Mullen, which is also very soft like that. And this is sometimes called Dittany of Crete. And it's supposed to be, um, I don't know if it's a relative of oregano, but it's supposed to be, uh, you know, similar to oregano in flavor. So they said, hey, if you don't have Dittany, then, you know, use oregano. But I was like, you know, if I can get it, let's get it. Also, it's, it's kind of neat and I can't wait to see how it looks as it grows. This is the ale cost. And this I can definitely see has been doing some growing and that's really uh, heartening. It's not as big as it's gonna get though. And also like I'm zooming in on it right now. So it looks like it's big, but like here's, here's my hand. It's not that big, but it's gonna be. And that's very exciting. And seeing all these, these new little bits popping up is really, really exciting. Um, especially since this is not really the time of year you wanna be buying new small plants. You know, we're gonna make it work. And I think so far the, the little setup that I have with that plastic deal is, uh, is working really well. This is the guy that I was really concerned about. Um, this is the Southern Wood. It's so Dr. Seuss. Like this is the weirdest plant I've ever owned. And I was really concerned because I don't know what it's supposed to look like. So I was like, how do I know if it's healthy or not? But then I saw these up here. And that's clearly new. That is that is clearly some new growth, and I can see little bits of that that little that new green uh, in in all three of its little tufts there. So that's very exciting, and I think he's gonna make it too. Continuing the check in with my herbs that I've planted. So this, by the way, is a that's a celery. Uh, it wasn't doing so great in my fridge, and so I put it in a little bit of water. I know that you can regrow celery when you like cut the bud off and I was like, let's just stick the whole thing in there, see what happens. Um, some of the outer bits are not doing so great, but the inside's doing really nicely and it's keeping it alive a little longer. Hi, Stella. This is my sage that I bought. This is a window box sage. So it's specifically meant for sunny windows, which it has. It's doing really, really nicely. Generally, I have good luck with sage somehow. I'm very, very lucky, I'm very happy. This guy. We got here, this is my winter savory. And he's definitely had some growth. So he's hanging in there as well. I'm really happy with this. Again, I don't think that this is gonna be enough to use right now for culinary uses. It will be in the future, hopefully, if I can keep it alive. But I do have some dried savory that I can use. So that's not the end of the world either. And this guy, what do we got here? I think this is my, this is my marjoram, haha. -ha. Marjoram's doing really well like really well. 
Like I feel like I could probably take a couple of little sprigs, especially off these bits off the top, and hopefully encourage it to kind of bush out a little bit. I don't know a lot about plants, but I, I pick things up here and there, and I'm pretty sure that's something I picked up somewhere. Uh, if I'm wrong about that and somebody has better information, I'm happy to hear it. This is the crest that I planted. It got super leggy, uh, it, which means it wasn't getting enough sun and it got like real tall. So anyway, I, I don't know that these guys are going to be okay. I kept the lid on this closed and I thought, oh, you know, maybe it'll keep it moist and all of that. And it did on the bright side. Um, there is a company, Full Circle, always has watercress. So I have some watercress coming on Tuesday. Uh, which is day after tomorrow at this point. Um, so as long as I don't need it for the first day, I should be all right. Watercress and garden cress aren't quite the same thing, but you know, uh, we're gonna make do with what we have. Um, the begonia looks exactly the same. It's not culinary. Okay, big long green onion, still hanging in there. My other sage, still hanging in there. This is my thyme, still hanging in there. This is my mint, one of my poor chives that she knocked down because she's a terrible cat. And she made a great big mess. Just cleaned the floor, Stella. This is that lettuce that I planted. I don't know. Is it is it doing all right? I I don't I don't know. We'll see. Got some more green onions. And my basil is still alive. Stella, what are you breaking? How did you even get up there? Okay. End of transmission. Hey, turn up the caramel. Burrito. My pants are made of leather. I find a 